All right. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Once again, we are back. It is still August 28th, 2023, and this is your Jacksonville, Florida regional update for Tropical Storm Idalia. Still expected to become a hurricane. Still expected to make landfall the Big Bend of Florida. We just did a big update on the page for the whole the whole thing if you're here for tampa or big bend or somewhere else that's where you want to focus on but this is for the jacksonville florida area specifically i have a lot of people in jacksonville that follow me that's where i'm from i currently live over here where all the thunderstorms are because i'm not very smart but that's a story for another day and we are still tracking adalia's progress to the uh, florida coastline of course a lot of big impacts coming, and Jacksonville is definitely in the mix for some serious complications with Adalia. We're going to talk big picture. We're going to talk about some potential ways this goes north or south for the city, and then we're going to talk about some comparisons to other storms that we've had in the past, our Irma's and Matthew's and the storms of record here, and then we're going to talk about the specific the specific forecast you could expect for your area. We're going to look at the latest graphics, National Weather Service briefings, etc., so we're going to get into it. Uh, this is the latest in the National Hurricane Center. We talked about this in the other video. I'm not going to go crazy in detail but maximum state winds are 70 miles an hour right now it's centered just off the western tip of cuba and the movements to the north at eight miles an hour is expected to move a little bit faster over the next few days and is expected to dramatically intensify into not only a hurricane but a major hurricane by wednesday morning so tomorrow we are going to see adalia rapidly transform into a much more formidable hurricane than it is right now and that is all because the that gulf of mexico has incredibly warm water and it will be entering a period of lighter wind shear and it very likely will take off into a strong hurricane so i want people to understand they're thinking well it's monday night and it's still a tropical storm like i mean is this going to be as bad as they say and it's like yes this will get much stronger much faster and adalia is going to be quite a strong and a pretty large storm when it actually winds up coming in so a lot of big impacts are forecast for our area. Now, I want to start with the big picture. Adalia is coming in the western coast of Florida. It's coming in the Big Bend. It's coming in the back door. So this is different than a storm moving directly in off the coast, uh, mainly storm surge threats, which we'll talk about. But this also changes the impacts to some degree. You have a storm passing, having to cross lots of land to get to our area. And it doesn't look like a lot of land on the map because you're like, well, it looks like a pretty short line to me. But that's over 100 miles inland. So you don't have to deal with the direct eye wall impacts because you're not going to have the winds coming in off the water screaming in as fast as they possibly can. Remember, when we say a storm has maximum sustained winds of 70 miles an hour, that means over the open water in a two or three mile swath, it's producing the, this much wind. Storms do not produce those kind of winds, you know, dozens to hundreds of miles away from the eye. You know, they produce high winds. And what's often confused in tropical cyclones is people hear 70 miles an hour and they think, well, I mean, that's not that bad. I, I, that, that wouldn't be a big deal. And then you see a sustained 70 mile an hour wind to your house and you go, oh, holy crap, that's a lot of wind. And you're like, oh, that's got to be like 100, right? And it's like, no, it's like 70. So please don't get these numbers too focused in your head. You know, it, it, we're talking about significant wind, significant rain, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But it is coming in the back door. So we have some modification of the things we expect from the storm and one of those is going to essentially be how close does it actually get that's kind of what we're looking at with this cone today okay Jacksonville remains in the cone you're on the right side of the cone one of the things we look at is when the storm comes in and most hurricanes you have the eye let's just say the eye is right on the train track here again the eye can pass anywhere in this cone so don't Take it as gospel, but just pretend the storm behaves. It comes right in on this line. The eye is directly centered on the black line. Okay. Usually the right side of the storm is the worst side of the storm. That's where all the storm surge is. That's where the highest winds are. That's where the heaviest rain is. Um, in this case, the rain will actually be flip flop to the other side. We'll explain that a little bit later. But uh, you want to be on the left side of the eye, not the right side of the eye. So unfortunately, most of Jacksonville lies on the right side of the eye as it moves in. So that is the negative side. The positive side is if Adalia were to take a bit of a deviated path, as in let's say she winds up on the western side of this cone, let's say she rides in more towards you know Panama City, the storm can, without with a small change in trajectory, again, a very small movement down here, can cause it to wind up being very much further away from Jacksonville when it moves in. So one of the things we're going to watch carefully for the Jacksonville area is how close this actually gets. If this comes in, like I said, in Steen Hatchie or Cedar Key and cuts right across northern Florida, that's going to be quite a ride for Jacksonville. You're going to get the worst the storm has to offer when it moves in. And again, it's going to move in as a Category 3 or a Category 4 hurricane. So the Hurricane Center has a hurricane stamped at 1 o'clock in northern Florida. That means... 
hurricane type stuff happening, right? So that is why we're, we're watching this very carefully and those small micromanages still matter a lot because if Adalia takes the center of the right of the track, I mean, it's going to be a hell of a hit. But if it comes in way up here and comes into central Georgia, you know, that's a considerable distance. That means some tropical storm wind gusts, but not a big deal. Let's look at the latest from Hurricane Center as far as watches and warnings. We have a hurricane warning in effect for some of our counties, Gilcrest, Swanee, Alachua, and Marion. We have hurricane watches up for Baker, Bradford, and several other counties like Alachua in the area. A lot of these in southern Georgia. And the tropical storm watches are up for much of Duval, Flagler, Nassau, St. John's, Putnam, etc. This looks better on the, the National Weather Service's afternoon brief. Um, you have all the counties in, in kind of like the weird flesh color question mark uh, is in the tropical storm watch and then the pink counties out here to the west are under the hurricane watch so when we talk about hurricane versus tropical storm watch that delineation is sustained winds above 75 miles per hour so anyone in the pink can see a sustained wind for a decent period of time above 75 miles an hour Do remember in Irma and Matthew, most of the winds we received were tropical storm sustained, and they were gust to hurricane force. So in this case, that would be much worse than what you saw with Hurricane Irma up here. All these counties in pink, it will be much worse than Irma in terms of wind. For here, it'll be, you know, something comparable to some degree. Um, but that has potential to change a little bit here. Basically, the Highway 301 corridor is kind of our dividing line between who's getting what. Uh, anything west of 301 towards the center of the state, towards Lake City, towards Live Oak, towards Gainesville, it gets worse the further inland you go is, is the moral of the story here. Um, I want to show you the basic idea of how this looks, then we'll talk specific impacts. For this, I'm going to use the NAM Nest model, and I want to illustrate my point once again. So I'm actually going to take you to the T6Z run of the NAM Nest. This is, this is, this is a model that ran this morning. This is the NAM Nest. It's a high-resolution model that the National Weather Service uses. It's not great for hurricane forecasting, but it is actually illustrating something really good here. Okay, so I don't normally use this because here's why. This is the NAM Nest for today. It's showing like a category five and a half coming into the panhandle. Okay, it doesn't like to, it doesn't know how to really do intensity very well, but it's illustrating something I simply want to show you on a broad brush. Okay, this is the 6Z run. This is basically the storm as it would look on a radar if it came in right on the hurricane center's track. This is sitting right in the middle of the cone, okay? So this is showing by mid-morning on Wednesday, 15Z Wednesday is uh, mid-morning on Wednesday. See that right front side of the eye? See that donut shape part of the eye? That is Jacksonville. Jacksonville's right here. So that's that, that's that core of the hurricane coming ashore right there. If I take you to the latest run of the NAM nest for the same time, it's showing that strongest core way out here by, yeah, out to the west of Lake City. Okay, and that's that small deviation in track doing this versus doing this and it's a small change but it makes a big difference down the line of where those winds and rains and stuff set up but if i go back to the zix z run of the nam this is what i want to kind of show how this looks okay so for the general thoughts general timing okay the first rain bands look they're going to start moving in sometime late on tuesday this says wednesday but it's actually valid late on tuesday so tuesday afternoon tuesday evening you're going to see two things set up number one see our little cold front setting up that's going to be the tr trigger point as this moves in for the heavy rain across georgia and the panhandle and then we have the rain bands moving into south, to uh, northern Florida. Okay, the storm actually comes in, makes landfall on Wednesday. The heavier rain, the higher winds, the tropical storm force speed winds are moving in by mid-morning on Wednesday, early morning Wednesday. This is just after sunrise, or actually 11Z is just before sunrise. Or, no, that's just after I'm thinking of central time. And then the heavier rains, the core of the hurricane comes in during the day on Wednesday. And I want to make I want to point out that the intensity of, of Adalia will be much worse than it was with Irma or Matthew. Again, assuming it takes that more on-point track. Okay, again, if, it, if it's way out west, this changes. But just pretend it doesn't. Pretend it's the worst-case scenario for Jacksonville. It comes right over us, okay? Um, you're talking about a much more intense hurricane, but a much quicker storm. Irma was a long storm because Irma was so big it took forever to get through our area. 
Matthew was a long storm because it kind of came up to the coast and then it sort of turned away and you had to sit there and wait for it to do its thing. And it wasn't moving particularly fast. Uh, Adalia is going to be moving at a nice clip, but Adalia will be more intense. It'll be more of a, of a roller coaster of, of not so bad to holy crap, this really sucks to then not so bad. Whereas Irma and Matthew was the roller coaster just going up like perpetually. You know, it was just endless body blows versus a boxer coming out and just wildly swinging at you for the, for the round, you know. That's how hurricanes typically are, the second one. And that's what Adalia very well could be, is there will be a period for a couple of hours on Wednesday when that core that you see here is passing that will be very intense. I mean, it will be worse than you saw in Matthew or in Irma. But again, the timing will not be as long as we go in. I can't show you any later in the day on Wednesday because this model ends right here. But you can see by later in the day on Wednesday, by mid to late afternoon, that core has begun to pass Jacksonville. You're, you're talking about lesser rain and wind quickly coming down. So it will be a different experience than Irma was or Matthew was. I don't want people to think, well, it'll be kind of similar to Matthew if you lived at the beach for Matthew, but otherwise it will be a different storm than what you saw with either of those. So let's go ahead and talk some direct impacts. This is from the National Weather Service and the Hurricane Center has the link to this graphic here if you wanna play with it. Um, if you go to the Hurricane Center's main website, you click on Adalia on their map. It is the local products uh, little tab right here. You can click that, you get this page and then you click Jacksonville's threats and impacts and then you will be able to get to this graphic. And you can zoom this in all the way to a street. You can, if you let, if you live on Old Middleburg Road near 295, this is uh, exactly what you can see. You know, but I'm gonna, I'm just picking that out of a hat. We're gonna zoom out here and show you the widespread area. This we're gonna start with winds. This is what most people are concerned about. The wind speeds, um, are, again, are going to be worse than you saw with Matthew or Irma, assuming this takes that inland track. And this is kind of the dividing line. You can see here west of town, right about Middleburg, right about just off to the west of 295 West, and up into parts of Nassau County. Um, that is where the dividing line between tropical storm and hurricane is. So anything in the orange is 58 to 73 miles an hour. That's the expected wind gust potential. That is wind gusts up to 73 miles an hour. Again, 75 is hurricane force. Anything in the red is 74 to 110. Now, for someone who freaks out on me that lives somewhere just west of town, you know, that does not mean that if you live right here, you're getting 74. And if you live here, you're getting 110. What that means is there's a shading to this. So it looks like anything to the west of 301, you're probably in that 75 to 80 mile an hour range in this red. Now, if you're way out here, if you're more towards Lake Butler or McClenny or Lake City, that's where you're talking about 80s and 90s, maybe potential for upwards of 100 in, at times. And this higher gust, you know, down by Alachua County, that's, that's you know, 90 to 100, 110. And then anything in the purple on the edge of your map here in the corner, that is greater than 110. And again, this is in a worst case scenario. So we don't want to anticipate this is going to be widespread, but this for, that's those wind gust potential. I think generally the Jacksonville area will see wind gusts, wind sustained in the tropical storm force at for a period. Again, this is when the storm's at its worst, the core of the hurricanes coming through. You're going to see wind sustained 60, you know, 50 to 60 miles an hour in a broad brush. And then you're going to see those winds gusting upwards of 70 miles an hour for Jacksonville proper and upwards of 80 to 85 miles an hour to the west and north of town. So again, when that hurricane moves northward, those worst effects actually carry into Hilliard and Callahan and Nassau and St. Mary's and Kingsland and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Storm surge, not going to be a big deal with this one. We have some onshore winds. We have some astronomically high tides that will lead to some minor coastal flooding, but I do not expect a widespread event. We'll see St. Augustine, all those places that always flood every time the wind blows in St. Augustine. You'll see some flooding along the St. John's River, like the fish camps and stuff you see flood all the time. You'll see some very minor flooding into Black Creek and the Middleburg, but you're not, we're not, it's not going to be one of those, we will rebuild with the kayaks and they're kayaking past the roof of their house. You know, you're not going to see something like that. Um, you're also, um, the, the, that weird thing that Irma did when she came through where it pushed all the water up into Jacksonville from the river, that's not going to happen either because Irma came in like this and was moving away from our area towards the north. Um, Adalia will be moving across the area this way. So that wind vector will not be pushing that water to the north. Irma pushed all that water in for a long time. It piled up in, near Jacksonville and then she swapped her winds out of the south and then it blew all that extra water into Jacksonville. That won't happen here. So we, we will expect some coastal 
coastal flooding and some intercoastal flooding, but we do not expect this to be a widespread flood thing. Okay. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see the rainfall potential. And actually, this is flipped on its head a little bit. Normally, the reds would be here and the oranges would be here. But instead, we have the highest rainfall totals off to the west. So Georgia, you're actually looking at the highest rainfall potential and out to the west, you're actually looking for the highest rainfall potential where the hurricane's core comes ashore. Jacksonville is actually in the better outlook for rainfall. Um, and it's it's not like it's going to be a picnic, but the worst of the rain, they're going to be north. Generally, the area can expect anywhere from like two to four inches of rain. It will fall in a pretty short order. It will be very heavy when it comes down. It will cause localized flooding. But then out to the west, you can actually see the rainfall totals four to eight inches plus for parts of Georgia and even getting closer to eight, you know, six to 10 inches down here where the center of the storm comes ashore. But that is uh, that is because that little that little cold front coming in is going to actually interact with the rains from the storms. You can see that cold front moving across Georgia in the morning before the storm makes landfall. That actually is a trigger point for more flooding rains later on in the day. All the tropical moisture runs up, runs into a cold front. So actually it makes it access a heavier rain to the north of the storm and then to the south of the storm even though you're getting the higher winds you're actually getting a little bit less rainfall than you would be expecting to the north uh, that's kind of the big ones right there uh, i think we also have tornado yes we have tornadoes to talk about the worst tornado threat is going to be south and west of us it's going to be like gainesville and ocala and back towards the coastline i can see this moving a little bit further north though i can see this kind of becoming more like this whenever the final graphic does come out but the worst rain the worst tornado threat is going to be near the water where those rain bands come ashore and then begin to rotate and you'll have a few rain bands that rotate coming onto the coast so you'll have to watch out for those but those will be less numerous than the ones coming Coming in from the south so overall tornado threat is not zero it will there will be a tornado watch most likely there will be some tornadoes but the worst tornado threat will be south of our area so that's a bit of good news there so again guys the wind threat is probably the biggest deal with this that we are looking at a potential for a a very high-end wind event one of the worst ones our area has seen it will not be as long or prolonged as francis was or irma was or even matthew was except at the coastline but it will be very intense. It will be a much more intense storm than Irma or Matthew were, where those were more marathons and surviving the rounds in the boxing ring. You know, this is going to be a street fight. This is going to be all hell breaks loose for a couple of hours and then it passes through. And again, those small adjustments mean a big deal. At the last minute, this begins to tick back to the West and this goes in more into central Georgia. It dramatically improves those numbers. What I gave you today is if a category three or four comes straight across the area and the, the, the winds do not improve, that is what you are looking at. So hopefully that gives you all a good idea for Jacksonville. Um, if you have any more questions, please let me know. I will do my best to answer them and I will probably do at least one more of these uh, early uh, tomorrow morning uh, before uh, the storm gets going. So I, I work nights, so I'm trying to like remember today and tomorrow. We'll have at least one more of these. We'll talk about all these numbers again, and we'll see what's changed. And um, like I said, if you're in Jacksonville, you're kind of hoping for those westward jogs. Um, you, you can't plan on them. So you need to be preparing for a high-end tropical storm to a low-grade hurricane. That's what you're going to get. And I want you to know what those, those words mean. That's not like, oh, some joke of a storm that will just whatever. I mean, it's going to be a significant impact. There's going to be a lot of power lines down, trees down. There's going to be a lot of issues at place. So that's what I got for you guys today on your tropical update for Jacksonville. We'll have another one of these. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and have a good one.